morning. I'm Don Clark. I'm Director of Business Development for NEC. Uh, very glad to be here. Be back with Network Field Day after uh, several weeks um, here at the Open Network Users Group. Uh, at this conference, uh, we worked with uh, the Open Network Users Group and our friends at Ixia uh, to establish network service virtualization uh, val validation. And what we're going to show you today is some of the tests that we took to uh, achieve certification from the ONO group. Uh, what we'd like to do is first start off a little bit of an introduction to NEC and our SDM product. Uh, and then uh, uh, our friends at Ixia will talk about the testing that we did. Uh, and then uh, Jenny Oshima will walk us through the demo. A uh, brief introduction to NEC, uh, a $35 billion global business. Um, about $8 billion of that is in telecom and another $8 billion in hardware IT. So we have a lot of experience integrating networking and platforms um, and saw the challenges associated with that, uh, which is why we funded the work that was done at Stanford uh, where the original OpenFlow um, and SDN work came from. Uh, since then, NEC has been leading uh, the market in delivering SDN solutions. We were first to market with OpenFlow 1.0 and 1.3, uh, first to have integration with uh, cloud management systems like Microsoft, and uh, most recently um, launched our PFTAP product. So uh, today uh, we are uh, getting the validation from the for network service virtualization uh, from ONUG. Um, but we've also been working closely with uh, several partners uh, to integrate uh, services. For instance, recently we certified uh, a number of Dell switches uh, to uh, integrate with the NEC controller. So a broader set of uh, ecosystem partners really to um, deliver new value and innovation to customers. So uh, a couple of announcements we made recently uh, with the product. Um, first, um, significantly, we introduced a pay-as-you-grow pricing model, which starts at $3,000. Uh, so we really lowered the bar to get started with SDN um, for uh, particular use cases so customers can really understand the value and the benefits of SDN. Or does that include the three grand? Is that uh, switches, controllers? That includes the software for the controller. Um, of standard um, redundancy, um, our UI software, uh, and um, all of the, um, the full uh, capabilities. So it's a full service uh, model. It also includes uh, connections up to five switches. Uh, so it can build up to a five switch uh, network. Uh, customers still buy their own switching or use their own virtual switching to, to use here? That's right. Um, of course, they can get switches from NEC or one of our partners. Is there an HCL or compatibility you know, list that you support in terms of? There is, yes. Yeah, so OpenFlow 1.3 has a number of optional features. Uh, so we validate against the feature set to make sure that the solution is production ready. And what are the growth metrics that drive the price up? Is it switch ports or switches? Uh, switches. So from there, we sell five switch pack licenses. Uh, we also have a 90-day free trial. Uh, so that's on our website. And we've um, got a very nice blog post that walks through building a virtual lab, uh, which will allow you to create um, topologies and mini net uh, to emulate you know, uh, what a network might look like. So it uh, really you know, gives a very easy look and feel for understanding um, how uh, the controller interacts with uh, uh, different um, topologies and different services. Uh, we introduced a number of new enhancements uh, in this latest release. Uh, first was support for uh, MVGRE for uh, Microsoft. So um, we can run uh, programmable flow SDN as an underlay uh, and uh, Microsoft as an overlay uh, for customers that want to transition from um, uh, uh, overlay network services to uh, full SDN solution. 
Uh, we also integrated uh, VMware vRealize cloud management platform. Uh, so there are 22 different dashboards uh, in this. Uh, so we can get really good visibility for VMware environments. Uh, the controller exposes a range of metrics uh, that can be displayed in vRealize. Uh, uh, we have support for OpenStack Juno in this release. Uh, and we've added additional visualization uh, and web UI enhancements, some of which you'll see today. Um, we've uh, published a number of new use cases on our blog. Uh, so you can see that at uh, sdnspace.com slash blogs. Um, there's a very interesting use case around uh, network service virtualization and network access control using OpenFlow. Okay. A lot of what we're driving at is building an open ecosystem. Uh, so that customers can integrate services with uh, their networks to be able to uh, better integrate both on the data plane, uh, their existing hardware, uh, and move to SDN, uh, and to integrate applications. Uh, so what we're going to show today is integrating three different uh, applications in the data plane. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is from our uh, uh, application ecosystem. Um, so Open Network Users Group is a um, federation of uh, end users really uh, talking about some of the challenges they see in uh, networking. And uh, what they came together and uh, identified a number of issues that they're trying to solve within their, um, their networks. And one of the key challenges that they identified was moving from uh, physical appliance for four through seven devices to a network service virtualization model where, uh, you know, really they're doing the same thing to network services that we're, they were doing uh, with servers previously. Uh, what were the problems trying to solve? Um, the, the CapEx of layer four through seven services, uh, time to require to configure appliances, uh, bottleneck single points of failure of inline services, uh, and then building service chains of multiple services. The problem identified in ONUG was um, being able to address this with uh, market with flow enforcement, uh, network service uh, attachment to the network, being able to configure the network, uh, compliance tools, licensing, uh, and lack of standards. So this is uh, what ONUG was trying to accomplish with network service virtualization. Um, and what they perceive as the benefits are um, enabling uh, uh, entire network topology uh, in the virtualized domain. So uh, abstracting network services from physical uh, devices. Uh, mitigating cost and complexity by multiple configuration points um, and really being able to address uh, exactly the right policy uh, to the right flow. Um, speed and delivery of IT agility is to, uh, critical to um, all the projects in software-defined networking. Uh, and um, uh, enabling the IT group to uh, kind of be the delivery of a set of services similar to uh, what users are experiencing in the public cloud. And overall, reducing the OPEX of the environment. So NEC has been delivering um, the net virtual network services for a number of years now. So. Um, when we saw that uh, this testing was going to be undertaken, we were excited to participate because uh, really to show um, the kinds of services that we can build. Um, we successfully completed the test um, ran by Ixia, and what we're going to do in the next few minutes is walk through a couple of those tests to illustrate um, what we've done with Ixia. Um, the focus of our test was the orchestration layer. Uh, so really orchestrating these network services uh, through service chaining. Um, there were other uh, participants that um, were actu the actual uh, VNFs uh, and uh, running other services. The basic concept of uh, the network service virtualization uh, and service chaining is to be able to apply the right policy uh, to the correct flow. So 
uh, this um, diagram uh, illustrates that we've got a different set of services and based on the characteristics of the flow, we apply uh, the set of services accordingly. Uh, and that's on a select basis so that we can um, apply the right set of services, but we also um, don't have the uh, extra capacity required if we were going to put a device in line. Um, both the physical and logical services um, are shown on a UI, so it's very easy to see um, how flow is controlled, and we'll show that in the demo. So um, what's unique about the NEC solution is we're actually uh, running network service virtualization on a network fabric. So we're controlling that network fabric. Uh, we're managing it from our network virtualization uh, platform. So that's uh, what we call a, a VTN, where we're creating a policy. Uh, and then it, it is, in turn, managing the flow entries on the switches for uh, steering the traffic. Um, this gives us end-to-end -end visibility, so we can see the entire uh, set of traffic moving across the network. Um, and uh, really, uh, it's mission critical. We'll hopefully illustrate that uh, in the demo. Uh, this is a open model, uh, so we expose the uh, northbound API to integrate with third-party services. If you were at the last network field day, we demonstrated how we can integrate, for instance, with Microsoft System Center for a complete end-to-end -end cloud solution. Okay. Uh, we've had a lot of uh, really great experience in deploying these kinds of networks with customers, and we see lots of benefit from uh, moving to this model. Um, first, uh, device consolidation. Um, by um, having these appliance pools and being able to service chain, we're able to consolidate the number of devices required. And we've demonstrated how customers can uh, collapse the number of devices by five to one. Uh, a decrease in service time, so a critical aspect of SDN is really that service agility. Uh, and it's um, really delivering results by not having to manage on a device for device basis, but the entire network. And uh, the speed deployment of new services. So a um, couple of examples here. Um, customers have built self-service portal uh, so they can uh, deliver firewalls as a service uh, through the API. Uh, and uh, we've had a hospital customer deploy a new biometric service uh, to identify the correct uh, patients' um, requirements prior to surgery. So uh, these are the kinds of sort of agility and new service offerings that customers are able to do when they uh, get some of the more manual models of network configuration out of the way. Uh, there are a number of key technologies in the programmable flow product that we're using for uh, this, these demonstrations. Um, network virtualization is core to our technology. Um, this allows us to have a network abstraction uh, so that we can create a uh, service graph independent of where the services are located in the network to really cloudify the network services. Uh, it's location free, uh, so this gives us the ability to um, really deliver the service anywhere uh, in the network uh, and um, high reliability. And we'll, uh, hopefully show with Ixia how uh, we can achieve uh, high reliability. Um, we have uh, vBridge and vRouter uh, constructs, which allow us to have layer three and layer two services. Uh, and so the uh, network is completely transparent. There's uh, no change to the, um, the kinds of network services that we provide. Uh, flow filter is what we're using to uh, direct traffic uh, into network services. Uh, the flow filter is like an advanced ACL in that it provides drop, uh, redirect, and flow statistics. So we can redirect traffic. Uh, and it can be location specific in the network or it could be global. Uh, so we can set policy globally or um, somewhere in the network. So flow filtering, one of the key parts about flow filtering is you're, we're programming that from the controller today. That's right. right. So our ability to define the flow is determined by how we configure it at the controller. 
That's right. Because in the SDM WAN stuff, we've been looking and talking a lot about application inspection, and they can dr very granularly analyze the packets and identify them. That's something that's useful in the WAN, but probably doesn't scale in the data center, I don't think. Um, so I, the way that we, our approach is basically we're doing up to layer four yeah. um, and then working with partners uh, for higher level services. Okay. Right. So for instance, we, we may on a select basis want to do DPI for certain uh, traffic types. Right. Uh, and uh, if you come see us at uh, Open Network Summit, we'll show how uh, we're redirecting malicious traffic into a firewall for yeah. further inspection or... Okay, but as you say, up to layer four is where Programmable flows focus. That's the that's the sweet spot for your product. That's right. Yeah, yeah. which is fine, right? That's yeah. in the data center. That's what you need. So it's a uh, stateless firewall yeah. uh, and um, service insertion. Yeah, right. makes sense. Okay. Uh, we'll demonstrate uh, the the REST API. We have a full set of uh, REST APIs, so programmatic control um, instead of uh, human control, um, and uh, we can do this on a per flow. Um, basis so we can have very fine grain uh, uh, traffic services. Um, and all of this is visible. So topology is automatically discovered uh, by the controller. The links or uh, status are continuously monitored, discovered by the controller. So um, somebody uh, analyzed it to uh, a Visio uh, live uh, in real time at the last network field day. Okay. The, um when you talk about topology discovery, you're not just talking about your physical switches. Uh, you're also talking about integrating with Hyper-V and VMware as well to get the end-to-end -end topology. That's right. All right. So it's more than just you know, discovering a few switches using LLDP. It's actually the whole graph of connectivity between servers and, and resources in the data center. Um, so we can see all of the endpoints connected uh, directly to the network. Mm -hmm. Where those endpoints have controllers. What about standalone devices? So Hyper-V has a controller, the SCVMM, right? And so you can talk to that controller to get an image of what the servers are under control of that. And VMware has got like vCenter is like a controller of servers, isn't it? Yeah, so, so it's typically that, that information is consumed in those systems. So we're pushing that information into so the systems. So you can poll, your controller can poll the server controllers of other platforms. So we only we can detect the physical port to connect yeah. it to the VM servers yes. or the SVC and then uh, right. Hyper-V. Okay, you so can the talk only to physical, yeah, yeah, the physical port that we detect and then that's we can put the policy through that uh, the physical port. Yes. And then once it gets into the VM, we yep. switch, then uh, it's going to be the V switch is going uh, to take it over. It, yeah. We don't have visibility into the V switch yet. Uh, we, uh, it depends on which V switch. Okay, yes. Uh, that's what I'm, <laughs> no, I guess that's what I'm driving uh, to. KVM and uh, uh, the PF1000 for Hyper-V environments. Right. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so now we're transitioning to uh, the testing we did with um, Open Network Users Group. Um, and this was the list of the uh, top 10 requirements. So um, if you go to the um, ONUG uh, website, you'll see a list of uh, white papers. Uh, and uh, if you are allowed in, you can uh, download the white paper and you'll see a, a very detailed set of uh, requirements that the users group has determined is uh, really necessary for network service virtualization. And so the group came together and said, okay, what are those top 10 requirements? And let's uh, set up some test parameters around that. Uh, so that's what this list is. We'll uh, walk through several of these. Uh, what we did was test the uh, eight of the ten functions for network service virtualization um, that um, uh, our product plays in. The, there were two services, um, auto-scaling uh, and uh, integration with uh, the uh, hardware resources uh, that we typically um, work with partners to uh, deliver services against. So um, for auto-scaling, for instance, it's usually uh, the service that's uh, doing that rather than um, the orchestration. Okay, yeah, so the um, SDN uh, network service orchestration, um, we, we had a number of different topologies but in general, the testing uh, fabric that we use consists of five parts. Uh, the first is the programmable flow controller. 
so that has um, the, the, both a CLI and a web UI for creating the orchestration policy. Uh, and we also exposed a, a REST API for um, configuring uh, the network. Uh, the controller is managing an SDM fabric. And so we wanted to make this test as challenging as possible. So we actually included switches from three different vendors, NEC, Dell, and Novaflow. Uh, and um, that network topology is Colossus topology. And again, that, those links uh, in that network were automatically discovered and managed by the controller. Um, all the state is in the controller and it's pushing flow entries into switches for communication. Um, the third piece is the appliance pool. And uh, in this, we worked with uh, three of our partners, um, Radware, uh, which is a physical device, um, a Steelhead from Riverbed, uh, and uh, an F5 load balancer, which were both uh, virtual devices. So one of the advantages of this approach is that we can integrate both physical and virtual, and we're not requiring uh, any change to the packet header. We're not doing any encapsulation. So the existing services can be ported over uh, to this model. The other um, really advantage of uh, using SDN and where um, there's really an excellent business case is we're only applying the uh, service as required uh, for the network. So for instance, DDoS is a very important service, but not something you want to have in line um, all the time. So uh, by being able to deliver that as a service, really right size the amount of equipment that you need, um, but you increase the availability and reduce the hops in the network. Uh, the fourth area is uh, the traditional network. Uh, so some of the testing we did included both uh, traditional network um, and a uh, Palo Alto firewall. Uh, and, and so we're connecting back to that legacy network. Um, and of course, the fifth area is the Ixia clients and services. Uh, and with that, I'm going to introduce Pierre, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, what Ixia does and uh, the tests we used for uh, these services.